In this video, we're going to look at a very common application of exponential functions, and that is interest, compound interest specifically. What compound interest is, is interest earned on interest. The idea here is if you get a 10% return on your investment and you start with $100, the next year they'll add 10%, so you have $110. But it's not just $10 a year because the following year they look at your new balance of 110 and they say, well, 10% of that's $11. And so now you have 121. Notice you earned more money this time than you did the previous year. And then the next month you'd earn uh, $12.10. You would earn even more money. And in fact, the amount you earn grows faster and faster. That's compound interest, interest on interest that keeps earning more interest. It's a wonderful thing when it works in your favor. It's a terrible thing when it works against you on something such as your student loans. That's where it's going to get you. And the way we can calculate what's happening with this compound interest as we look at the formula, which I'm going to give to you, is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Now let's go through what all that means. A is the future amount. You might notice the letter A for amount. Future amount, that's the amount you're going to have in the future, when the account is done or closed or in whatever we're interested in in the future. P stands for the present value. What you have right now to start with, P present value. R is the interest rate that you earn. It's important that interest rate is as a decimal because usually the interest rate is given as like 10%. You have to change that 10% to a decimal. And to help you remember, R is the interest rate. N is a very important one because it is the number of compounds per year. N stands for the number of compounds per year. Interest can be split up over the year in several different ways. A common one is compounded monthly. If you earn 12% compounded monthly, the bank's going to divide that 12 into 1% in January, 1% in February, and so on. 1% each month until you reach the end of the year. It splits up that interest over that many months. If it's compounded weekly, the interest is going to be split up over the 52 weeks. If it's compounded quarterly, there's three months and a quarter, but there are four sets of three. There are four compounds in a quarter, four quarters in a year. The N would be equal to four. N is the number of compounds in a year. And then T, as you might expect, is the time you make your investment for, and that's also in years. So T is the time. So let's say you make an investment of $13,000 in an account that's going to pay 18 or 8%, 18 would be nice, compounded monthly. We want to know how much is in the account after nine years. Well, we have this formula that I'm giving you is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Let's see what we know. We've got several numbers, 13,000, 8%, it's compounded monthly, and we want to know what happens in nine years. The 13,000 is what you invest in the present. That's your starting amount, your principal starting present value. It pays 8%, that's your interest rate. As a decimal would be 0 0.08. Make sure you move the decimal twice. If you use 8, that's 800% interest. 
If you use 0.8, that's 80% interest. Nobody's going to give you that. Compounded monthly, that's the number of compounds in the year. How many months? 12 months in a year. And we want to know how much is there in 9 years. That's our time. Time is 9 years. So let's plug that into our equation. A equals the principal present value, $13,000 times 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.08 over the number of compounds, which is 12, to the nt. n is the number of compounds, 12, times t is the time in years, which is 9. The tricky part here is learning how to put it in your calculator. And depending on the type of calculator you have, it might be entered in a little differently. The calculator I suggest is the TI-30XIIS. It's the easiest, straightforward one, because we can do this in two steps. First, multiply the exponent, 12 times 9, and we'll get 108. And then all we have to do on the TI-30XIIS is just type it in exactly like it looks. 13,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0.08 over 12 to the, and we'll use the little caret symbol for the exponent, 108th power, gives us our final amount in the bank of $26,643.89. In a matter of 9 years, our investment has more than doubled from $13,000 to $26,000. Let's try another example, where we find out how much money we end up with. But this time, we're going to work the interest against you. It's going to be an $800 loan at 3% interest compounded quarterly. A quarter's 3 months long. If the loan is paid in full after 5 years, what is the balance owed? And I'm telling you, I'm going to give you this formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N, all to the NT power. So we got some information. We've got $800, we've got 3%. Compounded quarterly, and it's paid in 5 years. Well, the $800, that's the present value of the loan at the start. 3%, that's the interest rate as a decimal, 0.03. Really good interest rate. Compounded quarterly, that's the number of compounds in a year. Be careful, a quarter is 3 months, but 3 has nothing to do with the number of quarters in a year. Quarterly means there are 4 quarters in a year, n is 4. And finally, our time is 5 years. So let's plug it in. Our future value, our future amount is A is equal to the present value, 800, times 1 plus the interest rate, 0 0.03, over n, which is 4, to the nt, 4 times 5. Again, we can have the calculator do the hard work for us. First, multiply the exponent, 4 times 5 is 20, and then type everything in exactly like it looks, 800 times 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4, all to the 20th power, and we end up with $928.95. For our final amount in the account for the loan payoff. So by using the formula, clearly identifying what variables are what from the problem, we can find out how much money is left in the account based on the number of compounds.